Okay, well, we've dominated this race so far. We have one run, 110 laps. There will probably be a caution. The only change I made is I added a little tape because we were running a little, uh, maybe a little tight for too long, but it started to loosen up at the end of this last run of 50 laps, so I will uh, take that out. Because if we don't get a caution, I might be too loose. But we'll see. This is an old setup, which just drives so well. I think it, it might just be a, like two tenths off starting off, but it also takes about five laps of the tires to fully come in. So the tire pressure to come up. So, you know, like if this was a green light checker. Full pound all around. I mean, you guys do realize that your tire pressures don't stay the same. Whatever you set it for in your setup, that's the starting tire pressure when you're cold. And as you heat up, you know, the, the pressure builds. So, like, you, like, um, Default Daytona setup, so what are they, like 27 on the left, 50 on the right? That's because those setups are designed, you know, left side's even to heat up. And be about 60. And the right side will heat up and be about 60 for the tires that they, uh, they're simulating. That's why for, you know, tracks that wear tires a lot, like Martinsville or Darlington or Phoenix, um, you tend to not start with 60 PSI. The higher bang tracks, uh, as a general rule, are more forgiving on tires. So you can put higher tire pressure. Like, um, okay, well, why do you run 60s in Daytona and Talladega? Well, basically, the looser the car is, the faster the road. Point. And you can compensate by closing up the tire stack. The difference between the left side tire pressure and the right side tire pressure. Um, no, it doesn't. It used to change the diameter of the tire with the bias fly, but it's huge. Um, Maxing the tires, so on and so forth. If you've seen Days of Thunder, they were still on bias fly tires when that movie was filmed, so uh, Harry says, you know, the match and staggered special, yeah, because there were variances. The tire guy had to go through the tires and found the left side tires that matched and the right side tires that matched. You know the difference in diameter, so you'd see guys with a tape measure measuring the long, you know, the diameter of the tire. And you do that by measuring it on the tread. Oh yeah, it was a. Oh, wow. See, here's a caution. We got nobody on the lead lap, so we're gonna pit. We don't need fuel. We have plenty of extra fuel. We're doing doing really good here. Um, here, watch me. It'll take me a while to get past them. Probably. And finger has been the fastest. Now, Martinsville is one of those tracks where you can you definitely be faster than the AI guys. Um, they don't have as much of, as an advantage, but at the same time. AI is a little bit more aggressive. Uh, you can definitely get nailed in the ass. And 
moved out of the way in certain situations. It, it's not that they'll do it on their own. It's like if, if you go wide into the turn, like here, and there's a guy under you, they know how to hug that. They, they will hug that inside and just you know, put their, no their nose under you. So when you turn in to get back down like that, yeah, they're already there and they're gonna hit you. just fresh air that it's not magically fresh air that makes it faster but you can get on the gas there there's nobody in front of you because you also at the same time you know you don't you don't want to get those bad mess you up more than anything Yeah, so we won both stages. Um, we have lap of field. That's the grant. We lapped him halfway through. We have had an early caution. If we don't get another caution, I'll be able to put him two laps down. But I think what'll happen is I'm starting to see trends with the AI the way I have it set now. Um, probably get a uh, caution leak. But if I can put them two laps down, then it won't matter. I don't even have to race them. It'll be a lap behind me, even if he gets a lap back. <coughs> cool thing. I had a 50 lap run. I got some clear track at the end of the run. And I still ran a 20.1. Very consistent setup. But I haven't ran more than 50 laps because we got caught. I think I ran 40 and 30. The first one. And then 20 and 50. So. And that 20 doesn't mean anything. So 20.2 is basically it's normal speed. Uh, push it a little and get 20.0 something. I have hit in a 19.8. But I believe that was in a, in a lead race. And, you know, a lot of guys. Yeah, there's draft here. I was hitting 20.2s, 20.2s, and I was running by myself, and then uh, I got on the same straightaway out of turn two as, you know, the next group of cars. There was a group of them too wide, and I didn't catch them until the middle of the back stretch on the next lap. But that lap that I was behind them, catching up to them, I ran a, a tenth faster, and I, I didn't, I wasn't pushing it enough. There's draft at Bristol. All the tracks have the draft works. I mean, you're going 150 miles an hour at Bristol. You've got to be draft involved. I mean, my Firebird with the wing on it. Uh, two years, 91, 92, they ran the, the flat wing. And they, they used that wing specifically to add downforce. And the numbers on that wing um, arrow down for us kicked in at 45 miles an hour. Now, uh, the trucks are bricks, but they still do get affected, probably more so than, you know, in some ways than the other cars. Well, the uh, cup cars are hard to beat as far as uh, arrow design. But it does have an effect. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Um, 
trucks are bricks, so they tend to react more. But Cinity and Cup too. Cup, Cup, Cup has more aero design into it, so it helps you turn more than the truck and Cinity truck. Remember, the truck is slower, so the slower you go through the turns, the easier it is to turn. Like, I'm about a second off of the cup car pace would be, so hitting the turns, I'm not hitting it as fast, so it's easier on the setup. But I don't have the engine the cup car does, so I'm also slower, you know? I don't, I can't get any numbers on the gen, next gen car, but I'm led to believe just like the previous, uh, almost 20 years now, all three series vehicles are the same weight, 3,300 pounds, plus the driver, or I, it might be 3,300 pounds with fluids, plus the driver. I'm not sure since they, they, uh, the uh, rules book is not made public anymore. Only uh, you gotta have access to it. Basically, you gotta have a hard card, is what I understand. And if you got a hard card for one of the series, you can go on the database online and you can uh, use the rules. But that, that's the way it was about 10 years ago. Uh, and I remember when they changed that in the early 2000s. And uh, I say plus the driver because it was plus the driver for many, many years, whatever the uh, the old weight uh, minimum was. Now you can you can run a you know 10,000 pound car, but you're gonna handle very well. Um, but the minimum is 3,300 plus the driver. Now for a while you had guys like Michael Waltrip and uh, a few guys that were taller and a little bit heavier than the other guys. And they were arguing, guys like uh, Jeff Gordon, and he came along, he was tiny, you know? And he, he weighed like, you know, 50 pounds less than the bigger guys. And they're like, that's a weight advantage. So for a while, the, uh, the vehicle weight included the driver. So the cars themselves, cars and trucks or whatever, themselves weighed differently from team to team depending on who was driving, you know, even from teammates, you know. So, uh, and how they do that is all the cars are a couple hundred pounds light and they add ballast, usually in the frame wheels, uh, lead weights, there's a whole bunch of stories about that. But um, lead weights in the frame rail, so you come up to the minimum weight requirement, whatever the rule is for that year. Series. But as far as I know, they all weigh the same. And <laughs> have been for a long time. I believe when the trucks started out, they were lighter. Um, but I guess somebody made the suggestion of making the trucks the same way, you know, and then they just made them all the same way to be easier for drivers to go from series to series. Because a lighter car will, will handle differently, it'll handle better. Better truck. Less weight to change direction. It's a business. But essentially, the heavier the vehicle is, the faster you go into the turn, the harder it is to get it to change direction. No matter how hard you turn the wheel, the car, the weight of the vehicle is such, you know, like when you blow a corner, when you dive in too fast, it just goes straight towards the, you know, towards the wall. And the only thing to do is to slow down. Hopefully you can slow down enough so it will steer again. Basically you created a tight condition before you hit the wall.
when you're in traffic so long you figure how to drive a cab. My goal here is to put them two laps down. I'm fast, but I'm not that fast. behind him was diving, it would just dive under him and then knock him into me. The trucks, that doesn't happen very much at all. I'm just kind of wondering what the difference in the AI program is for uh, the trucks to the Xfinity and Cup are. Maybe, maybe they did it for the trucks first and then they just copy and pasted it over and because the Xfinity and the Cup cars handle a little bit differently. That that difference is what makes the AI active. Yeah, if you program, you kind of kind of know what I'm talking about. And if you're a racer, you probably you know kind of know what I'm talking about too. But suffice it to say, if you use the same thing for all the series in a computer environment, sometimes you'll get results you didn't expect. So you have to program it differently. It's a little like, yeah, you can, you know, up to a certain speed, you can use the same setup for all three series. But once you do, you know, get to a certain point, then you start to realize the, the little the quirks of the different series. That's what I talk about a lot. Like this setup for the truck is is probably the best setup I have for Martinsville. Um, I can put it anywhere. I can stand on the brakes. Um, I can go up high. I, I can put it almost anywhere. It, it just has a little bit of a. Sometimes I have to I have to check up with it a little bit more than the Xfinity and the Cup, it seems. But I think that's just because I'm trying to be too aggressive. It's such a safe setup. Um, whereas the Xfinity and the Cup car, I think the, the main difference in what I'm learning is the balance. Um, because of the way those cars are aero set up, the um, Xfinity car being a little faster, aerodynamically, um, not as much downforce as the truck or the cup car. Um, you know, you gotta set it up differently. You know? Like, I can throw this in the Xfinity car. But what I've noticed kind of baffles me a little bit. I'll tend to run in the Xfinity car the same speeds as the truck, and that's too slow for the Xfinity, especially like at a track like this, speeds can be closer to the cup car. For, you know, whatever reason. That's, you know, that's my experience with lead racing. Um, overall, generally, there is about a four tenths difference. Um, I'm running 20.2s here. The Xfinity car should be about 19.6s to 19.8s. Um, cup car 
to be again about four tenths faster, like 19.2s to 19.4s, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm not talking about, you know, maybe fire it off a little faster or whatever. But for the majority of the run, it's about four tenths. You know, and, that, and that's a general, that's a general rule. But know this, if you get in your cup car and you're, you're running a 21.5, yeah, you're way too slow. You got a lot of speed left on the table there. Uh, if, you're, if you run a 20 0 in a cup car, you got a lot of speed left on the table. And uh, as I was starting to say, um, Martinsville is one of those tracks, for the most part, that you can run within a half a second if you got a good setup. But when you start off, you go the whole way down. Um, a lot of other tracks, you know, you're like 8 tenths to 1.2 seconds. Um, fastest lap, slowest lap in a fuel run. But Martinsville, yeah. I know my truck is like that. Uh, a cup car that's like that. I had a cup car. It's a little faster now, but... I had, I had the last version of it, it was like a tenth slower than it is now, but it only slowed down four tenths. The whole fuel run, you know, on old tires and whatnot. That was awesome. A small couple of races there. And this is an old setup. I've been meaning to work on it, but I haven't been feeling well. Today video this week so I just went with what I had I ran some practice laps and I was just amazed at how good it felt anyway and like I said I think I'm a couple tenths off for like lead racing but it drives so good I don't need that extra speed yeah well covered. Oh yeah, I want to talk about at a track like Martinsville in particular. Um, Richmond too, but you gotta have a good setup um, for it to really for you to really benefit. But I got the brake bias down here. I didn't check what it was. I could feel it down. I think I run a 41 here, and what it means is when I hit the brakes, the car you know wants to turn left. And I hit the brakes really hard, not not hitting people at times. But what it also allows me to do is, uh, if, if the car is a little tight, like it is certain parts of the run, see we didn't have a, we had 48 laps, yeah we only, I'm only getting like 50 lap runs, but I think we're good to go all the way. But um, yeah, see him fingers back. Couldn't put him two laps down. But I'm in first place, so I should be able to pull away from him and if we get another clock. Like right there. I was a little wide and I wanted to get on the gas. But you don't want to get on the gas unless the nose is pointed right. Otherwise, you just end up heading towards the wall. That's why I looked at it. Look it. Um, so, with the brake bias set right, you can trail brake, keep the nose in the line, so you can still get on the gas. If I can get the car to turn better, get the nose to come around a little quicker without loosening it up where you can't drive it on the long run, that's my goal. 
I made tremendous gains in, in doing that. You can see here that five points of the tape is helpful with a bit of a zero there. But that changes as the tires wear. This is one of those tracks as the tires wear. How you steer the car changes. Because the front end gets number. So you gotta you gotta hold it to the left more. But when you first start out, yeah, you gotta unwind the, the steering wheel a little bit. So it doesn't run over the curve and slow you down. Racing anybody. So, <laughs> a little bored. <laughs> no offense, guys, you're not going to follow me. Um, let's see if I can I'll get it down to a 19. I can tell just how long I'm off the gas. It's going to be close to my gas. Hitting the gas helps it turn if you hit it at the right spot. Help that nose come around a little quicker. There. And this is all, you know, I've worked on this setup. This is a this is a heat five setup. Um, ultimately, but it, it started here in, in uh, actually it started in heat three. This version of it. Well, that's not true. It, it actually started in uh, NASCAR racing years ago. But um, the latest version of it can directly be traced back to Heat 3. And then we evolved that. You know, there's, there's different theories about this and some of the fastest guys um, will say stuff like, you know, especially in Cup, you know, whatever you do, 1200 front frames, 600 and then, you know, do the rest of the individual track. Well, I found that to not really work. I get it, uh, but I've been doing, my experimental setup is, you know, not like that, my setups, like experimental setups, the ones that started working on a couple of years ago. Uh, I have really good setups like this, which I believe, no, this is not, this is, this is one of the, you know what, this is one of the early ones, I just had, had no cause to update it. I left it here on heat 4 and I think I updated it the last time we came to work so I ran the race in the truck. Um, but it's basically like, like I, you know, I developed it for heat 4 five years ago. You know, and I haven't been on heat 4 in like four years. So it's sat here. And, uh, He's good. And then I updated it with the V5 stuff. And also we learned, because I told you, I I'd lost some of my really fast setups. Um, Phoenix. And the V5 update a few years ago. So this was a good refresher. And it helped, what I had here helped me develop what I have for E5 uh, last year and this year.
The, uh, the first race in my league, he fought, was really fast guy. And, uh, he, he was basically dominating the whole race. And I eventually got up to, to run second with him and was able to maintain that. He run, I forget, I think we were running 50% times three in that race. Um, and the last run, we had like maybe 20, 30 laps. So I bumped the tire pressures up and I loosened it up a little bit. But I loosened it up just too much. But I, I restarted. I wasn't second in the restart. Um, I had to work my way through the field, but I managed to get through the field fairly quickly. Well, I guess we were using a disappearing strategy. Uh, and I got to this bumper. But I had loosened it up just a little too much with a few laps to go. I just could not safely get around him. It was too loose. But I mean, I was so, if he, you know, if he slipped, I'd have been by him. Won that race. Pulled away. But, um, it didn't work out that way. But that, that, was, that was a great moment. So I'm like, okay, I'm going in the right direction. And, uh, you know, part of what I was, you know, did after that was to try to figure out how to tighten it up without losing the speed. Because, you know, what do you loosen up? You loosen up to get the nose around quick. Whatever track you're at, there's a point, which is usually the apex, that right there, that just stops moving forward and starts moving left. I mean, it doesn't really stop moving forward, but you can see it. Because if you're pointed at the turn four wall and you hit the gas, you're going to head towards the turn four wall. Even if you don't hit it until you get to the front stretch, that's that's not the thing. So you want to turn. You want to start coming around and nail it like that. And get into a rhythm. Anything at Bristol, um, Richmond. So the faster that comes around, the faster lap you can run. Um, so you just loosen it up. Yeah, it'll do it. Absolutely. But then it'll put all the weight on the right rear. And you burn the right rear up, and then you can't drive it. And uh, you lose. <laughs> you lose your spot. You lose the race. You, lose, you know, your ability to be competitive. And so getting it to turn as fast as you can to get on the gas faster keep the tires on it at the fastest pace, that's the goal. And technically that would be the same goal at every track, but a track like Martinsville is tending to get more gains. That's why guys who run a really, really loose setup you can run away with it. But, uh, again, the strategies is um, loosen it up, you know, and pull out a lead and just pray you can hold on to it you know, until the caution comes out. Or, at a track like, a crowded track like Martinsville, with, uh, faster and slower cars tend to have more cautions. So then you get put fresh tires on it and you pull out again. Caution, put fresh tires on it, pull out again. And, uh, that works in a lot of leagues. But you get a league where, you know, like, you get somebody like me, I might not be the fastest guy on the track, but I can drive this thing for all 110 laps. And if you don't have a caution, I'm probably going to beat you. And so my goal has to marry the two philosophies, you know, have the best of all worlds, as it were, have good fire-off speed, and then keep it fast, and keep the tires on it, all the way down until you got a pit. And whoever can do that the best is going to win a ton of races. Just ride here. Got this in the bag. 
Last thing I'll leave you with um, driving advice wise is Dale Earnhardt. I leave on tracks like Martinsville and Bristol. Because he get just past the flag stand, he crossed the flag stand and he let off the gas. And rolled it into the turns. So he wouldn't he wouldn't overdrive it. And that's kind of how I drive. Um, harder to do in a cup car. Because everybody is just, you know, they're running qualifying laps, going deep, deep, deep into the turns on the gas. So it's, it's really hard. Uh, in league racing, too, everybody thinks that they have to overdrive the turns, so it makes it really hard to uh, accomplish. So let's see how a replay goes here in the truck. See, much better. Uh, look at that. It's more like the, uh, like the dirt cars, isn't it? Nice and clear, you see a lot of detail. One of those situations where I don't know why it's on Austin Wayne himself, and not me, but, um, okay, they trade paint. I didn't really see them trade paint. Wait if you get a nose and tail or something. But, coming back up, we had a caution, I pitted, nobody else pitted, so I was like 30th, come up through, see, that's, that's tight. And as you saw, I ran tight uh, about 1%, but, if you notice, I'm not sliding up. And at the same time, you know, it's a very tight track, so you got to turn the wheel. Um, so that's actually not that tight, but um, being being tight, having it wear tight, keeps the right rear alive, so you can go longer. Now, if you get it to go fast, it's a good shot there, that front tire. Because I'm turning it all the way over um, as the run goes on. That's the first stage. So near the end of the run, I'm, I'm, I'm turning it all the way over and it's gripping. But it's tight. It's snug, you know? So it's really important that you, know, you hit your marks. Because if you blow the corner and there's a guy behind, right behind you, he's going to take your spot. And if it's, you're coming to the line for a stage win or a win, you know? You just blew that rig. Which is why I like this particular setup. And if you notice, I got on the curb a few times. There's a whole bunch of stuff. But it, it handled it tremendously. And if you guys watch my Xfinity race here, um, a few weeks ago, or last season, um, I struggled a lot at times with that with a very very similar setup um spinning out on the curb and such the cup car does that too um i kind of understand on the cup car it's got more horsepower and 100 foot pounds more torque but you know so it spins the wheels easier and stuff but it's the front it's the front left that you get on the curb so why would it do that you know kind of thing so, I, it's one of those quirks Oh, that was it. That was the whole race. Oh, that was boring. Another great day. Got some more money. We got 155. We got 100 for the dirt race, only 155. Well, Martinsville is traditionally one of those tracks that doesn't pay as well, especially in the lower series. One of the issues with um, NASCAR and the owners. Damn, we are killing it.
Oh, 20 point on 4 2. Went 237 out of five, 250 laps. Damn. Fifty, hundred, about a quarter million. The dirt race is the best value, you know. Thirty laps, a hundred, you know, a hundred grand. If it were like that in real life, I would, I'd be racing dirt. So we got some damage here. Not only seventy-nine. No, we didn't bang it up hard. Incidental contact. Yep. Probably that incidental contact stuff. I don't remember any of that, but that's okay. So, and then I think we got a cup race here. No, Dover. A yeah, cup race at Dover next. Okay. Um, that's good. We had Bristol and Richmond already, but we will go back to Martinsville. We will go to Martinsville soon, I believe, or maybe we did already. I don't remember. Taldega, Richmond, Bristol, Texas. Oh, yeah, we were at Martinsville early. Okay, so we won't go back to Martinsville until we're in the playoffs. And uh, that's fine. I think we won Martinsville, right? First, yes, we did. I don't know why it says 99. Uh, one of them glitches. And where are we off to after? Can excuse me, Kansas, Charlotte for the 600. And yes, we were on all 600 miles. And then Pocono. Uh, okay, so I want to work on. Pocono. Pocono is my weakest track of the big ovals that I love. And it's, you know, three different turns and very hard to to get a consistent car there. Um, we, we did some work on Michigan. We're going to be testing a new setup in Michigan. And we got a new setup for Sonoma that we ran really well with in my last re league race. Sonoma is Glitch City, but... And, uh... Sonoma, I don't think we're going to run the gazillion miles that they have set up there. Um, but we'll run more like what they run now or or used to run or whatever. We'll, we'll get into that um, when, when we get there. I'm in Chicagoland, love Chicagoland. Got a good setup there. Got to bring an experimental setup test there. And then back to Daytona. Kentucky, uh, New Hampshire we're going to have to work on. Uh, and then back to Pocono. So we got Watkins Glen. Back to Michigan. Yep. And then in Indy is so late. I wish Indianapolis was was like now, but okay. So we got Dover up next in uh, the, the Cup Series. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.